In this video, I want to introduce predicate logic derivations, or sometimes called predicate logic proofs. Predicate logic proofs aren't terribly different from propositional logic proofs. There's a lot of overlap. So if you're preparing to do predicate logic proofs, you might want to brush up on propositional logic proofs because there is a lot of carryover. The significant or meaningful difference pertains to the need for some additional derivation rules to handle quantified well-formed formulas. That is, in predicate logic proofs, we have formulas where the main operator is the universal quantifier or the existential quantifier, and we'll introduce some derivation rules that allow us to reason with or to these types of well-formed formulas. So in this video, what I'd like to do is just to go over some terms that are important for understanding what's going on when we talk about predicate logic proofs. The first part is the deductive apparatus for predicate logic. The deductive apparatus for predicate logic refers to the, a set of rules of derivation. These are rules that express which well-formed formulas can be written after which well-formed formulas in a derivation. One way of thinking about the deductive apparatus is it's the set of rules of reason or the permission rules that allow us to move forward in a proof. The notion of a deductive apparatus makes reference to a derivation. I've covered the notion of a derivation before, but I just want to briefly cover it again here. All a derivation is, is a series, a finite series of well-formed formulas. And we talk about a derivation from a set of formulas, let's say gamma, to a formula, let's say phi. And all this is, is, is a sequence of formulas, beginning with gamma, and each kind of step in this series is a predicate logic well-formed formula, and this series ends in a formula phi. But this series has certain constraints on it. The first constraint is that we begin the series with this set of formulas gamma, and this gamma might contain you know five or six or seven uh, formulas. The formulas of gamma are sometimes thought to be or referred to as premises of the argument. So we're reasoning from these premises that are found in gamma to the formula, the conclusion, which is phi. So derivation, it begins with gamma and terminates with phi. The final constraint on this series is that each one of these well-formed formulas between gamma and phi is either a premise, an assumption, or is the result of preceding formulas and the deductive apparatus. That is, each one of these formulas in the sequence from gamma to phi is justified by our deductive apparatus. In other words, the, each of the rules is justified by one of our derivation or proof rules, or you can think about it as each one of these formulas is justified by the rules of inference or reasoning that we make use of. Just a couple things to keep in mind. First, the deductive apparatus is simply the rules that allow us to write well-formed formulas on a line. The deductive apparatus essentially justifies why the new well-formed formula can be put at the, at the line it's found at. The deductive apparatus for predicate logic consists of the deductive apparatus for propositional logic, along with the new derivation rules for quantified expressions that we'll develop in future videos. That is, we take all of the rules from propositional logic and we bring them in or import them in to our rule set for predicate logic. The last thing with respect to this, let's kind of note about the deductive apparatus is we adopt a lot of the same conventions for displaying proofs. So we'll display the proofs vertically. So rather than simply writing each of the formulas out one right after another in a horizontal row, we'll display them vertically. We'll number each well-formed formula so we can refer back to it. We'll make use of vertical lines as well as indentation to indicate the scope of assumptions. We'll also explicitly indicate when we make use of a particular rule from the deductive apparatus. In other words, at each line in the proof, we'll develop some conventions for saying that this line in the proof is here because of uh, the first line and the second line as well as uh, this particular derivation rule. The last thing I want to mention with respect to predicate logic proofs is the notion of a syntactic consequence. And all the notion of a syntactic consequence is, is that if there is a derivation from a set of well-formed formulas 
gamma to phi, then we can say that phi is a syntactic consequence or is syntactically entailed by gamma. The idea here is that if there is a derivation from gamma to phi, then we can say that gamma syntactically entails phi. So just to repeat this definition one more time, this notion of a syntactic consequence, we say that a formula phi is a syntactic consequence or is syntactically entailed by a set of formulas gamma just on the condition. So if and only if there is a derivation using the rules from pr predicate logic of phi from gamma. And we can express this by writing gamma entails phi. So in short, if there is a derivation from gamma to phi, then we can write gamma syntactically entails phi. And then the next set of videos, I'll go through some of the derivation rules in the deductive apparatus for predicate logic.